Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Welcome, welcome to the Modern People Leader, Sada. How's your week going? Thank you. Well, my week is going well. The usual ups and downs, great days with some hiccups. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and how is how is your week been going? It it was a strong week. So you know, for us, we had Thanksgiving this week. So Monday through Wednesday felt like I accomplished a lot. And then yesterday was a lot of fun, but I'm total, I'm so exhausted. Like I, I just feel like all of my energy is drained from all of the socializing yesterday at Thanksgiving, but it was really good. How about you? Well, Sina? not only that, but you guys hosted. We also, hosted. Right? Yeah. So, so you had there was cook and clean. clean. And, yeah. yeah. And set up the table. Like, yeah, there's a lot of little things that needed to be done. I'm sure it was amazing. Yeah. I am exhausted just from, so I ran a, a five mile turkey trot. Oh, you race. did the turkey trot? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Five mile turkey trot race. And my partner, my partner and I ran together and I was successful, not in completing it. That, I mean, that's always kind of a concern, but I'm, I'm medium in shape. It, my, my main concern was like staying with my partner. She runs quite slow and gets irritated if I go off. And so we, um, we stay together, we finished, but very sore today and, uh, and very still full. I have that feeling in my, yeah. way, got it in my way throat. too much. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, Tori's the exact opposite. If we go on a run, she's like, just leave me. She doesn't like feeling like she's holding me back. So she's like, just go. Like, I don't even want to see you. She's like, you can come back for me later. Or she'll take a shortcut to catch up to me. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm not a huge runner myself, but if I am running with my husband, I'm the same. Go, let me do my own pace. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. All righty. So let's do good news stories. Um, anybody want to kick us off? I'll, I'll kick us off. I, my good news story is it feels like for a football or soccer um, fan, it is like, it's a dream right now. There's a never ending stream. We're in the group stage of the world cup. There's never ending, you know, games it feels like. And so I've just been enjoying, and we have a big game today, England versus Wales. sorry, England versus us. Sorry, not mm -hmm. Wales. And uh, I am nervous for the U.S., honestly. That's bad news, but I, I think the fact that we have so much wonderful football to watch is, is my good news story. Mm. Well, uh, I have uh, my good news story has nothing to do with the football, even though <laughs> uh, we had uh, Portugal and Brazil games yesterday. So like half of the company was rooting either for Portugal and or Brazil. So in, we both uh, won. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not super connected to the, to the World Cup right now for the reasons that, we, that the world has been talking a lot about. So I, I would rather not go down that road. I have other good news stories, although they are work-related. And I, maybe I will let Danielle talk first. <laughs> No, you can go for if it. If it's not work related, okay. Yeah, it's go fine. for it. Uh, work is perfect. So, um, as Daniel was saying earlier, you you said you were uh, your energy was drained a bit from the work week, then the Thanksgiving, all the socialization and preparation of the of the of the day. And I feel, and this is going to be a little bit of a theme for, for my participation in your amazing podcast. I feel that we are living a human energy crisis, for instance, and people are more tired. I think our coping strategies are being put to the test because we have been dealing with so much, so many new things and one on top of the other. And in the last three years, it, sound, it seems like we didn't catch a, catch a break. And I was feeling this way in this month. I was feeling I needed a break. I was not uh, catching a break. And I was going through some professional dilemmas uh, in the company. And I felt I reached the dead end. I used all the resources I thought I, I had. Uh, and I decided to do something different, which is 
not different. We do, we do this throughout all our, our lives. So I reached out to my support system, my network, my peers, people that do kind of similar things that I do in other companies. And I just invited them for lunch or in another one for a beer on the same day. And I just wanted to check in on them, asking, sharing a little bit how, or what I was going through, what the company was going through, some struggles, and also asking them how they are, how they are doing, and how they are dealing with, the, with their issues themselves. And it was so refreshing. It was a day when I felt super energized. So my energy, uh, human energy was um, recharged, so to say. And I felt that because I did that, because I, I reached out to my support system in that sense, professional network, I was able to persevere throughout the, the month. Love it. Yeah. Uh, my good news is similar, I guess. So this is our second podcast that we've recorded this week in three days. And mm. I always get so much energy from... Uh, from from doing these podcasts, from recording these podcasts. So even though I feel a little bit drained right now, I feel like by the end of this call, I'll be energized again. So that's my good news. Great. I hope <laughs> I can also send you some Yeah, send me some, send me some energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be like, a, like drinking a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> but much healthier. Yeah, much healthier. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Sada, walk us through walk us through your your quick career story and how that led you to becoming the chief people officer at TBLX. Hmm. Well, uh, my story is not a straight line, uh, and I I'm Nobody's very is. happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy that it's not. I think um, when when I um, when I was uh, and it happened recently, I was thinking back. To where I am now and what led me to the place I am now because we were mentoring an initiative called Portuguese Women in Tech and there was a woman in, in the group that asked I, I, I didn't study tech or I'm coming from another background and I'm older how can I now give away or, or disregard uh, all this investment that I put in my studies and do a career sh shift, how far away is my dream job if I do this now? And I, I told her a little bit of, of my story and that I will share as best as I can <laughs> with you guys. So I, I, I started university in political science. I had the ambition that I wanted to change the world. And I thought that if I was in the United Nations or the parliament, I could have the agency to do that. I quickly realized when I was in the first year of university that that was not the ambition of the teachers or most of my colleagues. So it was a slap in my face. I was a, a straight A student and I told my mother, I'm quitting university. It was a huge shock. I went to work in a, in a, in a, in a shop, in a clothes shop to also support myself and I, decided to go study psychology because if you want to change something you need to understand the human brain that was also that's my second assumption i need to understand the human brain and i can change people from within or i can i, I would first understand myself because there's a lot of things to understand and then i would in, i would understand people and, and change the system from within let's say so I, I studied psychology and then social and organizational psychology. My master's was in gerontology. So my calling was to change the world and support the elderly. Again, the world didn't comply with my dream. So I tried to find a job that would pay for my dream and it didn't happen for quite some time. So I shifted careers again and I decided to go for the more regular consulting human resources kind of job. And that's when I said, okay, you need to pick it up. You have already invested quite some time in other things that although you like them, there are so many roadblocks. So then I, I was working in consultancy, hiring for health and marketing. 
and I saw that there were not a lot of opportunities for those professionals in the market, but I had a colleague that was hiring for IT and he had so many opportunities. And he was like shorthanded, he needed help hiring so many people. And I was like, this is where the opportunities are. I need to work in uh, recruitment in IT. This is where the, my future is. So I started working in an agency that, uh, that did uh, industrial outsourcing and permanent placement for IT all over the world. And I was there for almost seven years. So I developed the permanent placement unit there. I, I built a team and I was very happy and I learned a lot there. And then there was a message on my LinkedIn page saying just another tech hub in Lisbon, but this one worth the look. And I saw that and I was like, I closed my laptop and I was like, ah, this is a nice message. I cannot overlook it because I was so attached to my previous employer that I felt that I was betraying them, which is not the case. Like your job is not your spouse or your kid, or whatever. And then I read it and I said, I don't do interviews. Let's go for a coffee. And we did. And here I am. So three, three years after I was able to build all the, the people aspects of, of TDLX, everything that has to do with onboarding, learning and development, talent acquisition, retention strategies. Now on a more strategic approach, I was very hands-on when I joined and then my team grew and now I'm on, I'm on the leadership team. Love it. Love it. I always <laughs> like hearing these stories. Everybody's story is so unique. And um, yeah, uh, I can definitely relate to to the feeling of, you know, leaving a company and feel like you're betraying them. And um, I it sounds like you you landed at a great place. Can you can you share a little bit about what TBLX says? I I think Gail's business is really interesting. That's probably because my wife works for a very similar company. But um, mm -hmm. tell tell our audience what, what TBLX mm -hmm. does. Okay. So uh, TBLX uh, is the digital product studio for Daimler Truck. We develop products, software products for Daimler Truck globally. So we have a hybrid working model. We have a, head, a headquarters, an office in Lisbon, in Portugal, but we hire all over Portugal. So we, we have a hybrid working model and we develop software solutions, products for our partners, our business partners all over the world. So we have Daimler Truck North America, Daimler Truck Europe, Daimler Truck Asia. So we develop global solutions in the area of e-mobility. So electrified area of connectivity and pre-sales and after sales. So these are the three main pillars where we as TBLX operate. Our, our goal, let's say, and how, why we were created was to help, let's say, support uh, Daimler Truck in their transition to a tier one software company, because they are great doing hardware. This is their, like the, the, their, their strength. In the software area, they were not as good, let's say, uh, and we are there to make the transition possible and lived. We are here to develop a product using the service design approach and all of the methodologies that we know uh, are the, 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 the best to, to develop digital products. I don't know why I just connected this dot, but um, the interview we had two days ago was actually with um, someone named Amanda Ono, and she's the chief uh, the CHRO for Kroll Digital. So mm -hmm. she, she supports the part of the company responsible for, for digital. So we're having two, two chief sponsors <laughs> on in a row that, that have very similar roles. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So why should we, why should me and Steven be jealous that you get to work there? Okay. I immediately, when you answer that question, I, I, I refrain because I don't think anyone should be jealous. I don't like the word jealous, uh, yeah. but I see, I see where you're getting. I, I, I believe that what's distinctive about TBLX and our ecosystem is that we are developing products that have a real impact in the world of today and also of tomorrow. So if you talk about the sustainable solutions, so electric, uh, electrified e-mobility area, you see that what you are building as a software engineer 
if you are a software engineer, has an impact in the world. And not only the product, the software product, but also the product that is going into the, in the, into the truck, uh, the product as a whole, the electric truck is making a way to, 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 to changing the world in, in a more sustainable future. And especially when we were at home and during the pandemic, you saw how important, how vital the, the transportation, the shared transportation solutions and the trucking business was. It, it was because of them that we kept the world moving. And especially this is the mission for Dynamo Truck, for all who keep the world moving. We were responsible for making sure that we had food in the shelves of the supermarket, that we had medicine, that the world kept on moving while everyone was staying at home. So this is a very important. So, uh, and, and there is also a, a campaign from, from Dynamo Truck North America that really hit me hard because this is exactly what we do. They say, we don't build trucks. We allow your kids to go to school. The Thomas built yellow school bus. We uh, are making sure that the shelves have food for you. So we allow you to have family dinners. So it's more than just the truck. It's more than just the, 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 the solution that we are putting in inside the truck. So this is why people should be jealous that I work at TBLX. But oh, not only that, if you are in Europe or in Portugal and you would like to know more about, about TBLX, the world right now is living very hard times. Uh, and we are in a very particular setup. So we have this startup-ish feeling, even though we are not all, um, not a startup anymore. And we have this drive, uh, this flexibility, this flat hierarchy uh, and open culture. Um, but we are supported by this big mother company that has this financial stability. And it, 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 it would be very difficult for us as a small company entrusted by Daimler Truck to develop these products to have layoffs as we been, have been experiencing. Our business model is very cautious and risk averse. So we are not, we don't have a lot of VC. Now we have to grow, grow, grow. Now we have to fire, fire, fire. So we have this stability. Um, and yeah, we have amazing flexibility. And lots what of people. A what a what an amazing thing to have in a time like 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 these stability i think is that's probably not a word that many would have put at the top of their list of you know exactly. criteria for what they're looking for but i think a lot of people are looking for stability right now just wanting to feel like you're at a place that's going to make it and you're in a job that's going to make it through Mm -hmm. through these tough times. And, and I think that's where I want to start our conversation, Sada. It's been a tough few months for, for global people leaders out there between the layoffs that continue to dominate our, our LinkedIn feeds. There's inflation, the U Ukraine, the war in the Ukraine continues, although it seems mm -hmm. like now it's not getting as much press and news human rights issues and violations all over the world. You mentioned, we touched on that in, in the good news. And, and so it feels that it's just a very difficult world that we live in right now. And so how are you holding up? We don't, we don't meet with a lot of uh, leaders in, in, the, in Europe. And so I'm just curious, how are you holding up? How are things mm -hmm, going? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, um, Actually, that, that was one of the things that, that I, I was, my intention to bring to the, to our talk was exactly bringing the, the vulnerable as, aspect of, of, of the people leader, because it has been tough. It has been tough because things keep on changing. It's hard to, to set a course and keep on at that course, maybe to collect my, my thoughts a bit, um, Myself, and I'm going to be very connected with, with myself here. I'm talking in my own name. So um, Thank you. I have a purpose and a mission that has been with me since I can remember, which is I want to help people. I want to support them. And only if they're happy, I am happy. So imagine for a people leader, 
with this purpose and mission in the time we are today, where people are constantly under stress, depleted, talking about their mental health, feeling they don't know how to deal with, with the world, with the uncertainty, and we need to give them a North Star. We need to be the, 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 uh, o Porto Seguro, I'm, I'm trying to remember the, the word in English, like the safe place, uh, the safe dock, mm -hmm. it's a direct translation, for people to be in. And as a company, we are always also going through our ups and downs, trying to find the best way forward. So it's hard. We are doing the, what we can, the best way we can. And, and as a leadership team at TVLX, we are also young in the sense that we don't have years and years of experience in leading positions and leading companies of 100 plus employees. So this is also new for us in, in that sense. So we also have to find mentors and look around us in order to strive and best support our people. So, yeah. Yeah, I think stock, it's not the word that, that I would use, but it's a perfect, I just think of like Jack and the Bean, not just any stock, we're having to be the big stock from the Jack mm -hmm. and the Beanstalk story. Like exactly. Like very exactly. stable, sturdy from a people leadership perspective. And so what are, what are some of the things, it, it's a very difficult job to have in, a, in normal times. And in distress times, I find that for me, it's, um, it is, you, you, it makes me want to hide sometimes if I'm totally honest and, and I'm vulnerable. Like I don't want to, I don't want to have, I don't want to have to face the difficulties, but it's, it's my job. Right. And mm -hmm. so I have my own way of approaching life, approaching my job and to, to face the difficult things. And so I'm just curious what are some of the things that you do to, to keep balance and perspective during times mm -hmm. like this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you use a, a great word perspective and I will get back to that in a second. I will even take a note. Um, I, 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 I was reading an article about this human energy crisis. And one thing that I do just is reading, listening to podcasts, people that inspire me, to help me get this perspective, this outside in perspective, because sometimes you are so in your area, in your tiny little problem that the problem seems huge. And at the end, it's not that big. You have in you all the resources you need to deal with it. And no matter the, the result, A or B, you are able, it's a work problem in the end, right? <laughs> you are able <laughs> yeah. to deal with the consequence of the issue. But sometimes you are so emotionally invested in that situation. You want to make people happy. You want to serve them because I, I also believe uh, deeply in servant uh, leadership that I'm not able to get this perspective. So when I see myself going down that road, I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm self-aware. I tell myself, okay, stop. Let's take a step back. You, what have you done lately that's making you to experience those emotions in such a high stage. Have you been to the gym lately? Have you eaten right? Have you slept correctly? And I, I, I try to do this mental check-in and I say, yeah, this week you skipped your, your training schedule. Uh, you prioritized work over your sleep. So let's go back to, to basis, right? Let's go back to the things you know will give you energy and let's recharge your system in order to be able to deal with the reality with more resources, because right now you don't have all your resources and everything is connected, right? The emotion, physiology, cognitive capacity, right? So when, what I'm saying is this is the ideal scenario. Sometimes I'm, I'm in the emotional tiny detail a lot, right? And I have to slap myself in the face. So I, I, this, this podcast is honesty. It's not like a book. <laughs> this happened. <laughs> but yeah, I say, Sara, come on, snap out of it. Let's do, let's revisit what's happening. So 
try to get this perspective, talking to other people, listening to podcasts. I try to squeeze learning time in my workouts. So if I'm running on the treadmill, if I'm walking around early morning, this is my favorite time of day to do that. So I, I try to squeeze learning time where I'm more capable of absorbing knowledge. My, all my neurons are happy to, to know. So that's where I listen to podcasts, even uh, do some audio books uh, while I'm on the treadmill. And it happens, yeah. it helps a lot. Um, I, but I, I so go ahead. I was just going to say, Sara, I, I agree. You made a comment earlier that really struck me. And that was, you have everything you need to get through the situations. I, I, I do believe like the, the universe brings you, you know, things that you can handle. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't always see it that way. It's like, ah, oh, we're never going to get to this revenue goal or, oh, we're never going to get through this global pandemic or, oh, you know, how now are we going to get through all of these other things? But the reality is I'm equipped with, I've, I've been, I've been preparing, whether I realize it or not, I've been building up and in flexing my, my mental muscles, my emotional muscles, my actual muscles for, for, for what, what is being brought to me today. But, you know, I, I agree with you. That word perspective is, is so important because sometimes I, nothing has changed, but I, I can't see it today. You know, yesterday mm -hmm. I could see it today. I can't. And, um, and what I have learned is if I don't take care of myself, and, and, and um, re-energize myself, or I call it filling my bucket. Like I have these, all these little cups in me, right? And if they're empty, I, I'm empty, you know? And so I have, to, I have to fill in the little cups so that I am present and, and can show up for myself. And if I, if I do that, then I have the best shot of being able to have the perspective I need to, to show up for everyone on my team, for people in my life, you know, because I, 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 you know, I, I love your mission at TBLX. I love the, the, it, in, in Daimler, like this, this, the notion that, that I can impact lives in ways that I never even thought of. Right. I, I, I do mm -hmm. believe as, as human beings, we have the, the capability to do that, but not if I am empty <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I haven't, I haven't re-energized myself and I haven't taken care of the things about myself that I know are important to take care of. And mm -hmm. so I, I love that. I, I love I, that you're showing this. Yeah, I, I would like to, to uh, roll back a bit because um, I think it's all connected. And the other day I was, and, and, and being aware of where you are and your vulnerabilities, your blind spots and, and asking for help is something that is so rare in, 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 in leaders in general that the other day I, make, I made a, a LinkedIn post about this, that I asked for help um, in my team and they supported me and I, I, they, they forced me to take a day off. And I received so many private messages from other leaders saying, thank you for putting it out there. It makes it okay for me to also feel like that and ask for help because I don't feel validated. I don't feel this is okay. The society, the, the standards, the stereotypes don't allow me to have this, this feeling that I can also ask for help. I don't have to know it all. So I was also very surprised in that sense that I all, there was not a lot of comments in the thread, but so many private messages thanking me for that. The, in the day, the, in, the, in the, 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 the time we live today, uh, where I thought we had progressed more than, than apparently we, we are. And I, I wanted to go back to this replenishing your buckets. Also, the other day, I, I, I was listening to to a podcast from Brené Brown and she was interviewing a PhD neuropsychologist about the, the, the importance of focus and the fact that we don't multitask, we do context switching. We can only multitask in, task, in tasks that we are 
in autopilot mode for us, like walking, eating, uh, but the others, and especially at work, we are always in uh, uh, upgrading our cognitive load up to a state where it's no longer possible. So we will fail in, in delivering, uh, but we say we multitask. There are certain tasks that we do poorer than others. Uh, so also one, one, one thing that she mentioned is we have a flashlight system. And for me, that was like mm. spot on. So if our flashlight is on the outside, we are examining uh, or focusing on the exterior, the activity, uh, whatever we need to deliver, we are focused, we can deliver with great results. If we are going through something internal, our flashlight, our resources, our focus is internal. We are trying to solve some problem in our personal life. We are going through some, we are introspecting about certain things. We are trying to restructure certain things within us. We cannot be a hundred percent focused on the task at hand. Our flashlight is focused within us until we realize that or solve what we need to solve or take a, take a step back. We are not able to deliver a good result at work, for example. And this is something that I think it's not often uh, brought up. Yeah. yeah I, I, no, I was just going to say, so it's <laughs> almost like you have to focus internally and make sure that you're uh, addressing whatever needs to be addressed in your personal life before you can be present with your family, your friends at work. And you're never mm -hmm. going to be able to give, I mean, just thinking about like this podcast, mm -hmm. There have been some podcasts where I have something that's going on in the back of my mind while we're trying to interview somebody, and I can tell that I'm not fully present in the conversation, and I have to remind myself, like, presence, presence, presence. <laughs> I, I literally give myself these cues in my head because, you know, it's hard. Like, if you, if you have a thousand things going on in your head, and you're also trying to do this, and we have, like, our notes up over here, and we're trying to figure out the next question, there's so much going on. And um, yeah, I, I feel like this is the perfect segue into what we wanted to talk about. Like, it's not just people, leaders, or, you know, executives that are that are dealing with this. It's everybody when struggling with these challenges and the boundaries between personal and work lives mm -hmm. seems like it's never, I mean, like I'm in your living room right now or you're wherever you're at, <laughs> your office, your <laughs> living room, you're, you're in my office, you know, we're, we're there with mm -hmm. Steven in his little nook. Yeah, the 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 line between work and, and life is very blurry these days. And um, I know that TBLX has been doing some interesting things on this front to, I guess, help your people or, mm -hmm. or give your people the opportunity to replenish their their buckets and mm -hmm. to, you know, maybe use the flashlight to examine what's going on so that they mm -hmm. can be better in their in their work lives. So can you share mm -hmm. a little bit more about, about mm -hmm. uh, what y'all have been experimenting with? Mm -hmm. So we, we, this area, like uh, we, we all paid, uh, we always paid attention to, to the topic of mental health and well being. And, and during the pandemic, we had uh, the like workshops and, and open door initiatives where we actively spoke about it. And people felt that it was really okay to to speak up. It, they felt the psychological safety was immense. Like they could bring up topics if if someone was going through anxiety. If, even if people that we have people that are actually diagnosed, and they can, they felt that they could bring it up, which is something that I feel is extremely beneficial because we if if we got to know each other better, we can also find strategies and help finding strategies that make the, the work life ecosystem uh, optimal. This is what we did in, in, in the pandemic. Then we tried several things as others did, like the yoga, blah, blah, blah. It didn't really stick. Then uh, we experimented with hybrid and the, the, the world of the hour was, was flexibility. So we didn't impose any office days. We wanted to be as flexible as possible to accommodate some needs. We, in, in our benefits, flex benefits budget, 
We also accommodated well-being initiatives. And this year, we started with a pilot for the, the reduced working schedule during the week. So instead of the typical, at least in Europe, for the private sector, 40 hours a week, we started with 36 hours, which in practice man, man, means four and a half days per week. So usually our TVLXers can enjoy Friday afternoon off or Friday morning, or as exceptions, they can squeeze in their responsibilities in the other four days and take the Friday off. This is exceptional because for us to live a real four-day work week, as we believe it should be, then the working hours should also be reduced. Otherwise, people will have the tendency to overwork, work overtime in order to have this free day, but then they reach that free day exhausted. They're like during, they should include the, the breaks during the week. That's what flexibility means. I'm not there to control when you enter or when you leave, you have results to deliver, you have outcomes, right? You have things to deliver, right? You have responsibilities. And I'm not controlling if you are starting at seven in the morning and leaving and le having a bigger lunch break, as long as ev uh, the people that should know, know, right? The people that depend on your work know, everything is fine. So this was the first, it was a pilot and now it's, it's implemented for real. We even changed our, our contracts without any depreciation on the on the income. And we also started with a pilot with well-being bundle benefits, which means we hire, we, we pay for a, a psychotherapy, uh, psychology, uh, coaching sessions, and also an osteopath that our TVLXers can book in their Calendly and they can use the services. It's a pilot this this quarter, and we wanted to to measure the the adoption. And until now, it's it, it's been it's having great results. So our intention is to keep it. I even budgeted for it in my uh, <laughs> bucket to keep it for for next year. And it has, of course, financially, it's a huge impact. Right? We are paying for these free professionals to have availability every week for our TBL lectures to use their services, but we feel it's needed. Mental health should be a business standard for us. And yeah, we want to support that as much as we can. So quick question about the 36 hour work week pilot. And it sounds like y'all have, you know, in addition to the 36 hour work week pilot, now you're, you're doing the pilot for the, the mental health benefits. Mm -hmm. How long was was the pilot for for the thirty six hour work week? Was it just one quarter? Was it two quarters? We did it for four months. Four um, months, okay. It started in May, and it, it and we made the decision in September, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, May, June, July, August, September. Exactly four months. And. <laughs> Oh, no, sorry. Go, well, go for it, Stephen. Yeah, no, I was just going to ask, like, even taking a step back, I, I feel that in the U.S., this is a, still a bit taboo. There are companies, mm -hmm. emerging companies that are doing it. Many of them, you know, I see a, a trend that the companies that have been built for remote working or more open, so they've chosen mm -hmm. digital first as their hybrid mm -hmm. model. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like those companies are... Um, are more open to embracing these new concepts, but I still mm -hmm. feel like in the U S it's a bit taboo. Like, what do you, like, we're going to give everyone a day off or we're going to give everyone a half day off. Like, you know, this, this seems crazy. <laughs> we're, we're in the middle of a, we're in the middle of a recession. Like, you know, we should yes. be working more. We should be, you know, yes. you, we should be committing more time. And so yeah. how, what was, what was the, what was the uh, the pitch to your, your the uh, the rest of the executive team? So how what did those conversations look like? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically, we pitched to each other because we were very aligned in the sense that we did we don't believe that hours that working more means more hours in our business, right? It has to be adaptable to the business, right? We know 
that uh, there are bursts of creativity and it doesn't matter that you are eight hours looking at the screen that you will be more productive or inputting more work or creating better outputs or our, our outcomes of your work in our business it's not directly related if you are working in a factory if you are you know uh, i don't know doing notebooks uh actually if you it's expected if you work one more hour you will produce more notebooks than if you work less one less hour if if you have some automations in the built in if you are not stopping every five minutes to go to the toilet go to drink a coffee go smoke a cigarette you know but all those variables are are happening also in the factories people are stopping they want to make use of the lengthiness of the work and they are not being productive. So, product. Well, how do are they measuring the productivity? Right. This is this is a bigger conversation. What we did is what we compared homologous quarters or months, and we compared lead time in terms of development. Um, we we also took into account onboarding of new team members if someone was leaving. So we had a lot of uh, information to calculate. So. Are we decreasing our, our, our deliveries if we reduce a, a half day or not throughout four months? And in the end, it, the, 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 the results were we are not. So we keep it. And we also, of yeah. course, we surveyed our business partners. There was one that was the best response possible. I didn't even remember you were decreasing your work times because everything is the same. Like, uh, I, I didn't feel any difference. So this is great, right? Um, any difference to the worst. <laughs> I, I feel like, uh, I was gonna say, uh, I feel like, you know, giving people half the day off for Friday just removes the guilt. I, I, mm -hmm. I see this a lot with people where they feel guilty signing off a little bit early on Friday. They wanna sign off early on Friday, they feel mentally drained from the week. They're not even really getting anything done. They're just sitting there at their computer or at their desk until five o'clock because they feel guilty not doing so. So I feel like you've just given your people permission to recharge and use that last half of their day on Friday to either plan or to take a nap or to go do something with their family or to go do something they enjoy, whatever it is, however it is they want to spend that time they can get that time back. It's not time wasted because I don't know. It it feels like there's not like a lot of critical work, at least in like the knowledge working space. There's not a lot of critical work that's getting done at, you know, four o'clock on a Friday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, with the exception of this podcast, for me, it's four and a half. On a <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this is for fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I took the morning. I took the morning this this Friday. So I I was exactly what you're saying. Uh, exactly what you're saying. People, in the, we surveyed surveyed our our TBLXers, and they said one of uh, one of the more most trendy answers was exactly that. I feel it's okay to go because no one is expecting me to be here because I was not actually delivering a lot. On the Friday afternoon, and everyone in most of the company. So I would say that for more than fifty percent, I would say fifty-five, sixty percent of the company takes the Friday off, and forty would take the the morning. So we, we always make sure that we have some people in, in, on uh, throughout Friday. It's not us that make sure; people make sure, which is I think it's the best approach. Teams make sure. Yeah. That there is always someone available because they know that with great power comes great responsibility. So, uh, and with trust, you also need to show results, right? Um, yeah. So, and I think that's a good that's a good example of how a, this policy change it does impact work. I and you know what what you what I hear you saying is. It's not that this doesn't have an impact on our work. It's that the benefits are greater than the impact to the way we work. 
And there are ways of overcoming the impact, you know, that this has on our ways of work, like empowering our people to, to take ownership and to communicate mm -hmm. and to, to collaborate, to let people know like, Hey, I'm taking the morning off or, you know, and exactly. And I think that that is, that's how you build the success stories. But I, I do know that um, when you add this flexibility, you know, it, it can be a shift, right? And, and so I'm just curious, are there, did you guys have to do any new traditions or any kind of cultural changes to, to strengthen, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, I guess, counterbalance and to help mm -hmm. reinforce and strength, strengthen the culture as you, mm -hmm. you reduce the, the work week? Mm -hmm. I, I before I, I go to that, I want to I want to take the the purpurine, I don't know, like the unicorn puff puff out of the out of the room because it was a, and it is a lot of work to make this model successful. Because as we know, uh, this hybrid working model can be draining for employees for leaders if they don't create boundaries, if they don't raise flags saying, this is badly estimated, this, this scope is too big, I need the support from my manager, we need to collaborate more. If people just take in, take in, take in, because now I have the benefit, the benefit will disappear. And because they, they don't want to say, I'm working on a Friday full day, because they will, hurt their peers, everyone is working on a Friday full day, but no one speaks about it. And that's yeah. dangerous. So we all are very mindful and we are also a little bit controlling in that sense. So we are controlling of overtime. Mm. We are keeping an eye on overtime because we, first, we want to compensate people if they work overtime. And secondly, we don't want overtime to be a rule and, and we want it to be an exception. And we want to make sure that this model works. It doesn't become a toxic work environment where we say, oh, we are so fluffy, we are so cute, our employees work less, and then everyone is drained, everyone is stressed. So if we see a flag, a yellow flag, like someone is eating lunch during a meeting, they turn off their camera, I don't have time to eat lunch. So how, how often did this happen in the last month? It was just this time. Okay, it can happen. It happens every time, every day. We have a problem, let's address it. So we are very, we are like the, I don't know how to say, like, you know, those animals that are always with their ears in the air. <laughs> Yes. Uh, always in my team, uh, and we also multiply this attentiveness in 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 all other other people managers. Everyone that has a people manager responsibility should have this hawk eye to these aspects. You know, we need to be very mindful. I think that's a good Point. a good good <laughs> reminder. I think what I'm hearing is even with implementing these your job isn't done just implementing the new policy exactly you need to be intentional about keeping an ear and your eyes observing mm -hmm. how the workforce how how your your employees are embracing the policy changes and look for the unintended consequences because there could be negative consequences exactly. mm -hmm. and uh and what i love is how um how holistically you guys are looking at this. So you didn't just look at, hey, we want to be, we want to win a best place, uh, the best place to work in Portugal. And so we're going to, we're going to say we do this so that we can get the award and we can recruit more talent. It, you're, you're actually living and breathing the principles that you're, that you're implementing. I think that's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is also one of the reasons we are so, uh, miserable as leaders in the sense that because we want to be the best employer possible and being perfect is not possible not. <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah going going back to to your first question about what did we do or that there was if there was some some rituals that were adapted in order to 
uh, keep the togetherness or 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 enhancing the the feeling of belonging at TBLX. And actually, we 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 revisited because we are not in 2019 anymore. The world changed. People's needs evolved, uh, and we had to rethink because we are not a, re a fully remote company. We are a remote first company in a hybrid model. And what we hear from our people is that they also like to be together from time to time. So we found a way to facilitate that. So created the concept of team ideation days where we have a budget and whoever, uh, whomever from the team can say, we have a team ideation day. Usually it's for something that is not recurrent. So it can be for a creative session with the team where they revisit or restructure their roadmap, or they have a, they do a deep tissue retro or something more in, meaningful and intense, or they want to onboard some new team members and they want to do it in person. They want to go for lunch or go for beers. So we support that. And I think this was a major change. We also started doing some face-to-face -face all hands. So we, this year we did, we did it twice. We made it more of an event where it, it was not the typical all, all hands. We had some kudos activation. We had some like a complaint box, like post-its, things anonymous, things that they, they want to us to address where we had the leadership team in the front row asking uh, rapid fire questions. We had main achievements or things that are like really, really interesting from a product perspective. That was like more of a workshoppy session during all hands. We, we ate, we drank some things, we, we were together. <laughs> so that, that was also something different that we did. Beautiful. Yeah. I could, I could spend another 30 minutes talking about yes. rituals and all the cool <laughs> things, but believe it or not, I think we're, we're hitting that rapid that point fire in the questions. conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, we warned you, Sada. We warned you. It comes fast. Oh, no. it's, it, yeah. yeah. So, yes. All right. So we have a couple of rapid fire questions for you. How do you define a modern people leader? What are the traits and characteristics? Okay, and I and and we don't have the all day, right? And <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, in the past, uh, I I was reading also an article. Um, I I believe it was from Katie Burke. I think she was quoting someone, and but she used the a quote that I I connected with that I want to compliment. So she said that the modern, not the modern people leader, but she said that a leader is the calm lifeguard in the storm. I agree. I, I, in that time I needed to read that. I was like, yes, the calm life, the calm lifeguard in the storm, but I need to compliment because I cannot be the, the rock as, as, um, as Stephen was saying, like the, the big, uh, from the beans, the stock, the stock, <laughs> the stock, the stock <laughs> from the beans. I have to be bendable. I have to be flexible. I have to be vulnerable. The modern people leader needs to be agile, adaptive, um, needs to be someone that is able to, to show kindness, compassion, and can deal with ambiguity. I think these traits are essential because the world is always shifting. Priorities might, might shift, people needs, you need to be able to have this holistic view, looking ahead, this foresight is also very important. Um, and I think this, this is also a trait that is usually not uh, mentioned as, 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 as I, I would hope, which is creativity. I think the modern people leader needs to be creative. The person needs to find optimal strategies to deal with old and new problems. I think creativity was highly linked to artistic people with dancers, painters. We are creative people. We are always reinventing ourselves, reinventing the way people work, adapting, shifting. 
So I think this is has to do a lot with, with yeah. creativity. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much in there that I like. So calm lifeguard in a storm. I love that one. And then creativity. So I think a lot of people have this belief that only, as you were saying, artists or, you know, musicians or, you know, whatever are the creatives, like engineers, like these inventors. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. not true. I I took a class in when I was in college and it was a class on creativity. And that was that was like one of the first topics that was discussed that everybody has creativity inside of them. It's just a matter of finding a process that brings out that creativity. Mm -hmm. So we watched like a documentary with, you know, 10, 15 different creatives. Each of them walked the viewer through their creative process. And I think the point of us watching that was to say, like, you're a creative, even if you don't feel like you're a creative, you just have to find your process to get that creativity mm -hmm. out of you. So I agree. Mm -hmm. Creativity is very key. And I could talk about it all day. So um, <laughs> next rapid fire question. If you could go back in time and talk to a 22-year-old you, what career advice would you give yourself and why? Mm -hmm. Can I share with the audience that you already showed me this question before? Sure, yeah. <laughs> I had nightmares about this question, you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I it would be the... Like, why? Great why? question. <laughs> well, because um, first, my first reaction was great question, great question. I would love to hear others reply. Then I don't even know who is 22-year-old Sara. I forgot about her completely. So I had to remember who was 22-year-old Sara. It was a long time ago, 13 years. I don't know why you chose 22 years. Everyone is 22 years. You chose the same age for everyone. Uh, 22 years was a hard age for me. I ended university. I was looking for a job. I was not the same person. I, I was the same person, but what I would say to myself, and I decided I, I would uh, say this to myself, trust your intuition. You are much more capable than you think you are. And also trust your core values because even though you will change, Things will change around you. Your yeah, like your essence, your heart is pure, and it will guide you where you need to be. So this is what I would tell myself. It's very ni -ni -ni, but I, I would yeah, not. I would need powerful. to hear that. I would that's, need to hear that. That's powerful. Yeah, I. Uh, one of the things that I related to most about your journey is the. Um, the ability to to take a risk and see that there's an opportunity, uh, even when in in the face of failure. So you think, oh, like th nothing is going my way. N none of the things that I thought I would be doing are actually happening. But yet, oh, here's this other thing. Maybe that's it. And and being willing to go because that is very much describes how uh, I call that intuition call that I, I don't know exactly what you call that but not everyone has that 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 is a skill in itself and it's and it's a very powerful one and so uh so yeah I love I love what you shared um last two questions this is the very very end so we have uh, been so fortunate to have amazing guests like you um and and all the others that have joined the show through organic uh organic growth and recommendations. And so the next question is, uh, relates to that. And if, if you could, if you could recommend anyone that, you know, that we should have on the show that we have to have on the show, who would it be? And, and, and why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, this is, um, very easy to answer. I would recommend Nadia Vatalidis, the, the VP of people of remote, um, because well, I reached out to her once on LinkedIn, I just to, I think I asked her a question on, on through a private message and she was, she immediately uh, said, let's book a call and discuss that. So, and she's managing a, a hundred plus size people company. 
and back then I, I think TBLX was like 40 people and I was like cool thank you so much and she offered me mentoring sessions for free we had like two sessions and it was very very helpful for me back then and she was so uh I mean humble she was not like I have this amazing experience. Now this tiny little person is coming here with, with this request. I love that approach. And I think she, her, her life experience, work experience, and all of the things that a remote is going through right now. And the fact that remote exists, right? It's a, it's a huge company and, and what they are doing is they, they invented a new way of working in, the, in a sense, what the services they provide. I think they, she's a, she would be an amazing person for you to have. Yeah. We would be honored to have Nadia. So thank you for, for, we were recommending, we didn't have her on our, on our radar. Mm -hmm. And so that, that leaves our final tradition in the, in the modern people leader. And that is uh, one word or one phrase close something that uh, each of us, um, you know, a, a word or phrase that, uh, that we, that as we reflect on the conversation we just had that we want to close with. I'll and go I'm gonna first. Go. I, uh, oh. I'm gonna beat you. I was you, right you there about it. You have the notes. You have the notes. <laughs> we have the notes. <laughs> it's not a fair. Yeah, it's, it's not, not fair. a fair ritual. Oh. I'm gonna say replenish your bucket. So if there's anybody out there that uh, needs to to shine that flashlight internally to replenish their bucket, <laughs> go and do that. And I know I we're, we're that. heading into the holiday season, so I think that should give people a l little bit of time to, you know reflect on the year and um, yeah, yeah. Replenish that bucket. Love it. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with intuition. You trust yourself. Uh, I feel like that was a, uh, a theme in this conversation. And if, and my, my second one would have been perspective. Cause I think that we had a great conversation on perspective. Sorry, you are using no. You are using all my words, you guys. This is what Daniel usually does to me. Okay, damn it. Uh, well, I would. We spoke about so many interesting things. Um, I would use the word identity because you you touched um, upon that subject when we were talking about how how hard it is or how easy or or or, or hard it is to uh, find uh, your identity as leaders and i think everything that we've been talking about is about identity right how, how i am as a person and as a leader in not being able to uh, distinguish both things I think it's it's important uh, that we speak about that as well. Amazing. Well, Sara, thank you so much for for working late on a on a Friday <laughs> to talk to us. We appreciate you know your time, your conversation, your energy. You're 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 an amazing person, and we love the work that you guys are doing. And so thank you so much for joining us on The Modern People Leader. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.